Welcome, folks, to the 27th of September. There is a working group call where apparently in the northern hemisphere falls upon us. Um, this is a hyperledger call, and so the antitrust policy and the code of conduct are in effect. Please speak up or reach out if you have any concerns there, and we will help get them resolved. Uh, links in the chat. You're free to add yourself to the attendees list or make any other adjustments to the agenda that are useful for the community. Um, is there anyone new today that uh, would like to introduce themselves? Maybe somebody can add me to the list. They don't mind. Definitely. Although I don't know your email address off the top of my head. Just John dot Jordan. Okay, he's gone. Thanks. Yeah. Uh, can you guys hear me? Yes. Yeah. All right. Hi. Um, as for as far as newcomers go, my name is Kim Ahovi, and I'm I'm a solution architect with Findi. So I'm a colleague of Samuel's. I just joined Findi last week. So welcome. First time here. Glad you're here, John. What's the tail part of your email address? Gov.bc.ca. I should have guessed that, but I didn't. Yeah. Welcome, Kimo. Thank you. Any other, any other folks want to introduce themselves today? All right. Uh, announcements. We have two big ones on the list. We have October 10th uh, and through the 12th is IIW uh, coming up, and there is sure to be lots of great conversation about all the things related. We will not be having our regularly scheduled Aries call during that time, um, unless someone is super excited to host it and or to, to wants one enough to host it. And so the 11th, we have one more week before then, but the but the 11th we will we will uh, we will have an off week for the call. And then there's also the Hyperledger Member Summit is on October 23rd in San Francisco and Tokyo. And I have to resist saying San Fran Tokyo. Out of, out of Big Hero Six, um, but uh, those are simultaneous events going on there, which is which is pretty great. Uh, any other announcements we should have on the list, but don't. All right. Any projects want to share a release status or a work update? I think there's an eagerness for the agenda today. Um, Sorry, Sam. Awesome. Um, on on the Acapi front, um, we are going to do a zero uh, zero ten two has been released. We are going to do as well a a zero ten three for one other tweak um, that is needed for uh, a particular deployment, and we're going to accommodate that. Um, again, just one change. Um, Maine has a lot of new things in it, so we're um, beginning the process of getting 011, which might be one zero. Um, well, probably it's just 011 again, but we're very close to having a uh, 100 um, release um, put out. So um, things are going well. Uh, the SW Jot uh, support is in Maine. And will be included in zero one uh, zero eleven or, or um, and we do have the did rotate um, PR in place. Uh, did peer had a slowdown? Was, was, but, was that merged? Did rotate was merged? Uh, no, it's still a work in progress. Okay, um, but it is there and looking good. Um, and so we'd really like to see it um, moved into uh, the, the RFC itself um, approved. And move forward. Yes. So lots of stuff happening, that's for sure. Indeed. Excellent. Any other updates? All right. Uh, here's what I have on the agenda, and I suspect that we will not get all the way through it, and that's okay. I've tried to order it. Um, Patrick, are you here today? I don't actually see Patrick. Okay, we may need to, to rearrange. Uh, he's, he's gotten uh, put by the, the side twice on his topic. And so I, I put him first. 
We may need to shift around to this little out of order if uh, he's able to join us later today. Um, but he had some topics you want to talk about for the credential protocols. Um, there's uh, besides Patrick's topic, uh, we have uh, the uh, Aries marketing update. If there's anything to, to add there um, from Alex or Helen, um, the uh, there's an AFJ proposal that they've requested time to speak of. And then we have an update on the unqualified uh, dids, including some minor updates there, but overall not a ton of movement, but not any decrease in urgency as for, uh, you know, approving and, and reaching comfort level with the, with the various uh, elements of this so that we can move forward as rapidly as we can. Um, any, uh, and then uh, any, other, any other topics that we want to get on the agenda today? All right, uh, Helen or Alex, anything to add? Um, nothing, I think, that would pertain to this group. Just another encouragement for folks to um, join us in the marketing call. Um, we do have some good discussion. We had a great discussion yesterday about sort of the, the goals of the Aries marketing effort and kind of what we hope to kind of get out of it and um, uh, identifying what would be kind of a successful outcome. Um, so good conversation yesterday, but would love to have more input. Um, and I'm sure we'll have more to talk about after today. So um, yeah, uh, please mark it on your calendar for the last uh, Tuesday of every month, uh, if you don't already have it on there. Um, and it is on the Groups.io Aries cal community calendar. So if it's, uh, you can grab all the information from there as well. Awesome, thanks, Helen. Hey, uh, uh, Sam, do we wanna talk about some of the stuff that we talked about in the uh, Didcom user group meeting Monday? Um, for the demo, you mean? Uh, yeah, the demo and the uh, beta. Do you have a link for the beta release? I do. Okay. Uh, will you add that to the agenda here? Um, yep. We may not get to that today, given what we've got to do, but well, I'm going to add it to the list so that it's there and, and, the, and the links are present. Awesome. Any other adjustments? And thanks for Colton for bringing that up. We may not have time for the demo today, but that would be really cool. We have a, we have a really cool Didcom V2 in browser demo, um, but um, uh, we'll, we'll see what we have time for today. Okay, I think we're on to the AFJ proposal. Who wants to, is it Kareem, is that you speaking up about that? I guess I'm the only one. I expected more people to be here. <laughs> I'm in Danish, but I'm the only one. Um, yeah, I just wanted to bring this proposal up because uh, I don't know if everyone um, looks at this word is good, and I just want to bring it uh, into attention. So um, we, uh, well, if you're young, as active maintainers of AFJ, have um, discussed uh, for a while now um, uh, the, uh, the discussions that we had in this working group uh, a few weeks ago or a month even. Um, moving, of, uh, moving to um, OWF is a good idea, yes or no? Um, and uh, we came to the conclusion that we would like to try it. Um, therefore, this proposal, um, which you can find in the, I think it's in the meeting house, right? Um, I think I saw it there. Yep. Um, meeting. Uh, there's a and, link in the meeting notes as, and I've got it on the screen as well. So not that we need yeah. to like read the whole thing right now, but. Oh, exactly. Um, so yeah, I was, I, I just wanted to announce this and to see, um, um, if, if there are what people think of it, if there are any concerns or objections or questions I can answer. Um, and if not, then perfect. We can keep it very short. Um, uh, but the main motivation behind it is basically um, that uh, we, we at least Animo is a European-based company, and we see a lot of other, like the European Commission went for for standards like, um, um, uh, well, OpenID uh, and SDJOT um, and stuff. And um, we've been also trying to get some funding here and there um, over the last uh, um, <clears throat> weeks, and it's, it's difficult to convince uh, our audience, at least, that um, a framework carrying the name Aries Framework JavaScript is more than just um, well, the, the typical hyperledger uh, identity stack. Um, so that's, I think, the branding issue there is the main reason. Um, yeah, I don't know what, what to say more about it, actually. I think it's all written down here. 
Under, Thank you, Kareem. There's also this discussion in the AFJ repo as yeah. well, and that that's what I link to here if folks are curious. That's um, perfect. So, so definitely folks that want to uh, to you know um, share opinions there are also good. But we're here in a meeting, and that's a useful place to have a discussion. Are there any comments or questions um, about uh, about this topic that we can discuss here today? Uh, well, I think. Oh. oh, sorry, John, you're next. Okay. Um, yeah, it's not a a new idea, but I think it brings up some various conversations. Um, there are other Aries, you know. There are other components, you know, components in Aries uh, right now that could potentially be. Also, an interesting fit there. Well, like I'm thinking about bifold. I'm thinking about Ascar. You know, I don't know what I think about Akapaya yet, just yet, myself. Um, I think there are techno political things to think about. You know, um, coming under the governance of Google and Microsoft and other big companies that aren't clear with their alignment on the sort of confidentiality and privacy um, features that DIDCOM offers. You know, whatever the protocol is for exchange, um, you know, OpenID doesn't offer anything other than transferring a token really at this point. Um, so I think, you know, from the BC government point of view, we're still committed to that capability for our people um so that's that's a few comments anyways yeah i think to just answer that quickly is we we are not planning to drop support for for this file. we are like it's it's not that we want to 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 change the current stack per se i mean over time there, there might be changes just as there have been changes over the last well couple of years but um we are not planning to drop support for that per se, um, we'll have to see if there if there is room in OWF or or that those kind of libraries or more low level level libraries have to be well be placed elsewhere. I don't know, maybe at the, under diff or something. But just to be clear, did we are planning to to keep support for diff phone? Yeah, sure, I, and we contribute as well. So it's not like we'll stop contributing or no. participating. It's just. Just to be aware that in the big, big picture, um, there may be some strategic goals that are different with corporations and, for example, governments. Yeah, I think that's very useful advice. Yeah, thank you. Consider. Thank you, John. Uh, Samuel, your hands up. Yeah, thanks. Uh, my first comment is the same with Jones, that's okay, there are many areas components. So whether this suggestion only considers the JavaScript framework, what will happen to the Python and Go and Oscar and components John already mentioned, I think that's a, a good topic for discussion in this meeting. And for the second issue, uh, maybe if John is worried about if, Open World Foundation takes control of this and they, they want to drop the support for DITCOM uh, or privacy preserving attributes of uh, areas, then I suppose it's still open source and you could still fork it and put it somewhere else and continue somewhere else if it leads to that. But I wouldn't be too worried about that. I think it would be better to have this discussion uh, together with the tech giants within the Open Wallet Foundation and to have some convergence of frameworks there. So I'm hopeful, but of course there are no guarantees. Uh, thank you, Samuel. Uh, Steven? Yeah, a couple of thoughts um, on, on some things. One is I, I agree with John and think, you know, moving bifold and AFJ, um, extensions would be 
totally necessary as a part of this. What other ones would go as well, Oscar, I think is a good idea. Um, what other ones um, is to be determined, but I would think those would be just a given, I would hope. Um, the, uh, I, there was uh, a comment made by Anker about, is this a fork or a, or, or a move um, with a follow-up from Timo saying, well, it's whatever the community wants. Oh my God, I hope we don't do a fork. Please don't do a fork. That would be a disaster for everybody, I think. Um, we don't need uh, two of these things. So either move it or don't move it, but don't leave one behind and, and move the other uh, and move an, uh, a copy of it. I think that would be terrible. Um, and then I do think... Um, would stress hopefully there would be you know as you say Karim, continued involvement in aries um, protocols i mean a, a big question as as we think about these things is where does aries rfcs go um because that's the glue that's holding everything uh together and makes it work i mean um we we've seen what happens when you know dot net and af go sort of disappear um from the community in that we haven't i haven't seen uh anyone um around for quite a while from those communities and and as a result their compatibility um is not is not being maintained shall we say afgo is definitely being actively worked i see you know commits and prs all the time um but it's just it's being done in in a totally different environment that that uh, I can't see what what what's going on, and they're certainly not participating here to have discussions and, and maintain that. So I hope um, we do figure out where the areas RFC goes. That um, the test harness remains a, a, an important element because it's been really uh, really good. Although it, you know it it could always use more attention, but it's been really good at being able to test things and make sure. You know, take a look every every second day to make sure we haven't digressed in any way, or or when we digress that we that we raise it and 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 try to address it. Those are my thoughts on it. Yeah, uh, no, you're right. Um, I I talked to uh, Sebastian from Lizzie, who I think they are in charge of moving um, the .NET framework, and he suggested he. I asked, like, what are you planning to do? And they said, well, they were considering a fork. But I agree with you. Um, it's also the case, it's like, if our attention would move to the fork, um, like the maintainers that are maintaining the repo right now, then I think the activity will be very low on the old one. So it doesn't make sense indeed. Um, so definitely that is, the, that is the idea. And by the way, the, the long-term goal sort of is to then start modularizing AFJ even more into lower level libraries that, but also on thread related libraries, for instance, and also um, you know, the, the things we need to stay interoperable with all the Aries interop profiles. So the plan is definitely to, uh, to stay active in this community as well. Yeah, I think the AFJ situation and the .NET situation are different in that the .NET library hasn't been touched in quite a long time. And so it doesn't really matter um, how it gets moved. Uh, 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 my suggestion was just take the latest, and the latest I don't think is is in in Hyperledger. So the idea was just to um, just to uh, archive it here because you know it's not it's had you know through that I think it's like six six commits in the last two years, um, something like that. So yeah, the .NET is a different entirely from from Ares framework JavaScript, which is extremely active, has extreme act, extremely active development. Yeah. And it's completely awesome, I should add. Tracy, your hands up. Yeah, I think this is a, a great discussion um, around what components to move over, uh, what to keep in Hyperledger. Um, I, I'm glad that you guys are aware that the .NET um, proposal has already happened within the Open Wallet Foundation. The, um, 
the one thing that I did want to address was the governance question uh, around, um, you know, will these big companies take over um, the the way in which we're running the Open Wallet Foundation is um, similar to the Hyperledger Foundation in that the maintainers are in control of the source code. Um, so you, the maintainers will be the ones taking it forward and um, making decisions as far as the roadmap and features and things like that. So um, I wouldn't be so concerned about the governance per se. Um, but yeah, I mean, obviously you have to be aware that there are a different set of people, a member of companies that are involved in the Open Wallet Foundation and the Hyperledger Foundation. So, um, but, you know, as far as, you know, uh, the TAC, uh, which is uh, the equivalent to the TOC and Hyperledger, coming in and saying, this is the way it has to be done, that's not going to happen. Um, you know, it's just not a good way to, to operate in the open source fashion. So uh, that's all I wanted to say. I think the concern there, if you allow me to interject here real quick, I think the concern there is not so much that, uh, well, it may be that they tell us we can't. But the other thing is, is what becomes sort of blessed within the community and what doesn't become blessed within the community. We've seen uh, Hyperledger uh, promote Aries quite well. Um, and uh, and there's, with the politics involved and various protocols and everything else, it will be, it's a little unknown to see how much, uh, you know, w whether the project is allowed but, but, uh, but not really championed. Um, or whether it, it is indeed, you know, um, promoted alongside other projects. Uh, that's that's a little bit of an open question, and of course, there's no real answer to that. Um, I think probably the uh, a wait and see approach is is uh, is will reveal the most as it relates there. Ah, understood. I uh, didn't get that side of the um, equation, but. Um, you know, I would see if Aries framework JavaScript were to come over to the. Open Wallet Foundation, it's probably uh, either in a growth state or an impact state beyond what any of the other projects are uh, currently in the Open Wallet Foundation. So in my mind, um, you know, at least at the moment, that's uh, that's where marketing should probably end up going. Uh, I really, I really think it's important to for the kind of modularization to happen um, because I think in the end. Uh, you know, we're going to need pieces that can be used across many different wallets, um, be it Didcom, be it OpenID for VC, be it SDJots, be it verifiable credentials, right? I just, I, I think that there's um, going to be a lot of optionality that's going to have to exist. And that's where I personally would like to see things go. But, uh, you know, I'm not a maintainer. Uh, you guys can decide what the, what the right thing is. Well, that's exactly that's exactly what 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 our idea is indeed, and also to to hopefully bridge look between those two ecosystems. Because if we look at at AFJ right now, it is actually we are starting to implement support for OpenID, and um, um so it is it, it has the potential to to bridge ecosystems, but not as one monolith of the framework. Uh, for that, we need to modularize indeed. So, thanks. I think a couple. Uh follow on comments, just thanks for everybody's comments. One is, you know, from my point of view, um, I, I can see, you know, like a strategic value to this. It's not, I'm not trying to say my comments are not supportive. I think I support this. I would really like to see the group that Stephen mentioned, you know, the extensions and the bifold, potentially Oscar as well, because from a from the saying what we're doing as BC government and in our and I can't speak for my colleagues in other provinces, but it might be helpful for our jurisdictions to be able to have conversations with European jurisdictions at that level and say we're using components that are available to you and you know all that sort of higher level stuff. Um, Regarding modularization, of course, we have contributed, I don't know, millions maybe to that effort. <laughs> I mean, we we did the effort to break into SDK into Rust components. And so, and we also helped create the Anoncreds project thanks to Stephen's leadership. And we'll be having some code with us that 
further support the idea of modularization and interoperability for credential formats, signature formats. So we'll obviously continue to to contribute to that that uh, idea. Particularly, I think um, sort of um, appropriately granular Rust libraries that can be, you know, included in projects. A few more comments. Thanks, John. Uh, Helen. Yeah, um, just kind of putting on my my marketing hat here. Um, I think it's important also to acknowledge um, the the amount of effort and coordination and support that the Aries um, community, uh, that the Aries uh, staff, uh, the Hyperledger staff puts into supporting the community tools um, that support the, the Aries community. So the staff, you know, and this is stuff that is actually baked into the governance of, of Hyperledger, which is quite nice because, you know, there's no kind of getting around some of the, you know, bug bounty stuff, the CICD stuff, the, <clears throat> you know, the different chat functions that are paid services that uh, the Hyperledger staff maintains, supports, and helps onboard folks. I know that there's, uh, I think, three different um, community support folks at the at, at Hyperledger that's, that do a lot of this sort of background work um and and keeps things going so i want to just put a link in the chat here uh just to see if if there have um part of this conversation has has anybody on, in this conversation has looked at the the amount of support that and the types of support that hyperledger offers and is that same type of support is there an equivalent of these types of supports at owf currently and um, if so, are they in part of the the governance of the labs? It's a it's going to be a labs project, right? So are are they going to get receive this? I would hate to see the community have to overcome you know some kind of technical hurdles in this process and you know get you know I don't know have have issues that that could be mitigated if you know we didn't identify these things in advance. Yeah, that's, that's a good point. Very good point. And I think it's a point that also came up um, during the conversations we had uh, during this working group a month or two back. Um, and I'm very aware of um, of, of the support. Uh, I've been in contact with Sean. Shout out. You are there. Yeah, uh, <laughs> a lot over the, over the last month. Um, and no, that's something we, we really appreciate. And we have... Uh, we have um, Talk to ODLF about this, um, and they went as far as to say that they were uh, even willing to hire the same people um, um, uh, for those purposes uh, if if needed. Um, so because I, I think because they're both Linux Foundation in the end, um, they were hinting towards sort of a collaboration thing. Uh, uh, so I don't know the details about that, but we have definitely asked about it. Um, just to yeah. mention on. As a representative of the Hyperledger Foundation, Rai Jones, who's one of the other community, I can't answer everything Helen just said, and it was a great comment, Helen, but Rai Jones has been tasked with supporting OWF in the near term. That may change over time. They may get their own community architects, but for, for right now, um, this team is, uh, you know, we, 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 we would be involved. We're not, we're not, we're not leaving OWF uh, hanging, for lack of a better phrase. That's awesome. Um, Helen mentioned labs. Is that the plan or how does it work at OWF? Is there anyone who can speak to that? I guess, Tracy, you're probably the best. Yeah, I can speak to it. Um, <clears throat> so we have a similar sort of life cycle to Hyperledger. Um, so I'll find the link and I'll send it. But um, the idea is that there is a labs space just like in Hyperledger has a lab space. Um, the other two life cycles are called growth and impact, uh, which would be similar to our uh, incubation and graduated. Uh, the difference is obviously that um, we're a little bit more uh, specific about what that means. Um, so it's it's hard for people to um, you know jump directly to impact if they don't have adopters, if they don't have um, you know the diverse community that we would expect to have um and that sort of thing so um 
you know, I, I personally think, you know, I don't know what the diversity is for AFJ currently, um, but I, I would say that I would skip labs as a, a stage, um, given the maturity of the project, uh, given the fact that I, I know, obviously, there are adopters. Um, you know, whether it's growth or impact, I think we would have to specifically look at the requirements for each of those stages and determine what the what the right place is. Um, and like I said, uh, as soon as I'm done talking, I'll um, switch my hat, my brain, and I'll go do the Google search to get the the project lifecycle and stick it in the um, in the chat here. But uh, yeah, that's uh, hopefully that gives some um, sort of response to that. As far as um, Ellen, the project services that exist within um, the Open Wallet Foundation, we obviously do have mailing lists. We have the Discord channels um, that we set up for each project that gets accepted, whether it's a project or a lab. Um, we, uh, you know, I think are still early stages and things like webinars and um, things like. Uh, um, blog posts and things like that, right? I think there's still a, a bit around the, the marketing side that still has to be hashed out. When it comes to the Open Wallet Foundation, uh, I do know that um, if anybody's interested, pre-IIW, we are having a face-to-face -face, uh, in Mountain View for the OWF, and I'll find that link too and send it out. But uh, if anybody's interested in joining, kind of talking with people about, you know, the direction that Open Wallet Foundation is heading and, and things that might be of interest. I think that could be a, a useful place to start to have those conversations as well. Yeah, I think labs would be not the ideal message. Um, I want to highlight a couple of things here is that uh, particularly if a repository moves, uh, the, my, my primary interest as a community leader is that number one, the work can continue and, and also that it can continue to be used. And so the least disruptive way that we can do that is, is ideal. Um, I, and because of, of that and compatible licenses, et cetera, and hopefully as Kareem mentioned, an intent to be involved still within this community, then I think the, the need to transfer more than one thing that may be associated at the same time is not necessarily important. Um, and that it may be worth uh, allowing uh, a project that has the desire to sort of forge new ground and figure things out um, to do so. And that, uh, and that can inform, uh, you know, potential later moves that, uh, and I think that that approach would be good. I think um, the, um, I don't, think that being in a hurry is necessarily uh, a requirement uh, for this um, and there's certainly stuff to be figured out um, so that's sort of my general thoughts there uh, specifically mentioned uh, by you john was uh, was afj and in, in bifold which uses afj as a dependency and i don't believe that it should be um, if we do this right it should be disruptive or hard to continue to work on bifold here in the meantime while we uh, see what the transition process is like and then can make some decisions that are a little bit more informed by by how things have gone and what things are now ready um, from that perspective given that this is a more mature project than than um, than exists in OWF now uh, that it, I think there is likely to be a little bit of uh, of growing pains as they accommodate the needs of of that uh, of the AFJ developer community um, and users as they as they uh, you know absorb that so my thought generally as a community leader is that uh, not pushing too fast, too hard is likely to produce the, the least amount of disruption to the actual you know, creation of the project and, and use of the project. I can certainly live with that. Just wanted to bring up the, you know, the conversation. Absolutely. A a AFJ clearly is volunteering themselves to go try it out. And so I think that this is uh, this is good, um, and and I think is is likely to going to help you know all the all the situations involved in the sense that they can you know figure out and uh, with OWF you know what's required and what things look like there et cetera, um, and uh, from a membership perspective or attending meetings perspective or seeing agendas perspective, 
um, or even you know the same folks. Not everyone from AFJ attends here, for example, but but several do, and and con and continuing that up, uh, for example, would also uh, you know help things align as we as we move forward there. Um, and that that I think was was clear in what um, in what Kareem was was writing here is that they intend to to remain involved over here. Um, and, uh, and I think that that is a, uh, you know, I appreciate that. I, my, my goal is to not let that go. Um, Aries is a handful of things. Uh, we've been talking mostly about code uh, at the moment, um, but it also, of course, is uh, the development of interop profiles, uh, testing that's associated with interoperability, and also just coordination from projects as we talk and discuss things here and, and, and identify goals that people have within the community generally. And I think it's important that in addition to the code that we uh, figure out uh, both in the short term and in the long term uh, how to maintain the useful bits of what we're doing uh, that we can continue to make them happen as the community moves forward. Um, they, they exist now because uh, they have been created by need, um, which is a good signal that they need to continue existing. Uh, Warren. Yeah. Yeah. Um... I guess one just kind of mechanical comment, which is um, figuring out whether anything different has to happen or uh, to ensure that things like um, Aries uh, coordinated community updates uh, will continue to be able to, to happen well. Uh, AFJ has certainly been, been a big part of that so far. And so ensuring that you know, those kinds of processes, which are, you know, part of the ARIES um, initiative, along with interop profiles, are able to succeed. I fully, fully agree. Yeah, I think our, uh, our folks will, um, we will definitely um, um, make sure to, to stay interoperable, so follow all the interop profiles, and therefore, uh, it also makes sense to to visit these kinds of working groups and and work updates. Indeed, I agree. So, um, I will highlight that this issue is open up, and they anticipate a uh, you know a comment period um, that with fourteen days started two days ago. Um, and so, um, you know, voicing issues and, and, and being involved in the discussion here on um, uh, on this particular issue is the right place to focus that discussion. Um, and then, and then the, the you know the the AFJ uh, you know maintainers and, and contributors um, can uh, can can make a decision based on that. Um, I think the the over, overwhelming thing is that uh, is to plan ahead so that you can have the support necessary when you arrive, um, and to um, and, and I, I'm, I'm with Stephen on this. I think uh, generally uh, forks are problematic um, and it would be far better to move the repository in order to uh, preserve history um, and, uh, and, and, and have the, the most minimal um, impact on those using the project as possible. Um, I don't think that uh, it's, it's much of a conflict uh, because of the similar nature of the organizations. I don't, you know, I don't, I don't anticipate a conflict uh, where having a, a dependent project not in the same organization is going to be a significant problem. Um, the, the biggest issue, and I think Warren, you highlighted this really well, is, is the, the necessary sort of ongoing uh, communication and coordination with the community to, to make that happen. We, I mean, we've also talked about, um, I think there's certainly some, some optics that, uh, that, that some folks may prefer from the OWF side of things. Um, certainly, uh, you know, the, I have, We've talked already and, and have development efforts underway for the adoption of, of, uh, of the you know, uh, European identified protocols and, and credential formats, et cetera. And so that's already happening, I think, uh, but, but if, if, the, if the developers find it valuable and want to execute such a move, then, um, then I think that the best thing to do is to, is to always, of course, support the, the developers and maintainers' uh, you know, needs and goals as they, as they proceed forward. Um, I don't know who Zoom user is, but the comment is, is there anyone in the call who can comment uh, whether Akapai would follow or even move at the same time? Uh, John or Steven? I don't think it would move at the same time, no. I think if we, if we, um, uh, you know, work, work together, like as a community, whether regardless of what 
legal structure we're inside of in Linux Foundation, and we can make informed decisions as we move forward. It's not just on, you know, the AFJ folks to do things to stay compatible. I mean, folks from this th this world, we can also have a responsibility to contribute to that framework if it meets our needs. I mean, we're using it, we have it deployed in production, so we have an interest in it evolving, you know, um, in ways that meet our business needs. So not not at this time, but it's it's something we can consider. Thank you, John. And a thumbs up from the question asker. So excellent. Any other discussion on this topic that we need to have today? Uh, thanks, Kareem, for bringing the topic up and getting the conversation started today. Um, and we have some uh, some open conversations. Some of these are, uh, you know, a little bit beyond the scope of just the AFJ move, but this is definitely stuff to keep in mind. Um, and I think that keeping an eye on the circumstances and uh, and observing how uh, how AFJ fares in its efforts, I think it will be instructive for uh, for for potential uh, future discussions in the community. Um, Really quickly on the unqualified did rotation uh, or the unqualified dids and, and handling of that. And, and again, I have listed the things here. Um, one thing that I will mention um, is that uh, there have been some minor updates to did peer four per Steven's suggestions. Um, and, um, oh, I'll open the issue instead of the PR. Um, so, uh, but, but it largely remains the same. There was just some wording clarifications that actually happened there. Um, and so this actually happened, and there was some discussion that that, uh, that Daniel Bloom uh, brought over uh, that was uh, that was mentioned over on um, you know on on the Y two identities uh, situation and, and addressed that. So the 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 there's a, a plea here um, in that uh, all of these things. So did rotation, did peer four, uh, the did exchange uh, uh, update with um, with no did, did document and a signature, and the community coordinated update, as well as the areas agent test harness. Um, anticipated, uh, you know, use for testing this are, are, are really important issues. There is an urgency uh, to both make this change and to migrate onto Didcom v2 um, in a way that can can expand support mo far more broadly uh, outside the areas community, um, but also allow us as the areas community to stop uh, addressing issues that that are, have already been solved in Didcom v2. Um, and so uh, please uh, consider that from your development timelines. Um, with, there's been a request to, uh, to leave some PRs open without merging just yet in order to gather feedback from implementations. And while there have been implementations, that's, that's wonderful. Um, the, and, uh, and then I think um, we, we wanna move on this fast. So despite the fact that there are no changes or anything to announce today, which is actually a good thing, um, that, uh, that, that calling attention to the fact that, that we, we uh, hope to execute this rapidly, um, and so uh, in the next coming weeks, I anticipate uh, both the merging of all of the uh, of all the relevant PRs um, and a discussion and choosing of dates for the community coordinated update for the adoption of these things. This will be closely followed on by an effort to add Didcom v2 support and deprecate Didcom v1 support so that we can uh, so that we can uh, migrate away from that as a community and, and, and lose the historical issues that it has um, as well. Any comments or questions on the unqualified did stuff? Um, we have just uh, 10 minutes left. Um, there is a, uh, DCO runs a public DIDCOM mediator, um, and this was brought up and, uh, and discussed, not the announcement of, 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 the, of the new beta, but there is a new uh, code base driving a, a public mediator. Um, and so uh, th this is the page with the new uh, uh, mediator invitation. Um, to, uh, to to begin using that. We would love it if folks, we've had a lot of use of the public mediator that we had previously hosted. We would love it if folks tested their stuff with our mediator um, and, and helped report any issues, solved any, any problems that you found. We've done a lot of internal testing, including load testing on this, um, but we wanna make sure that, uh, that we, before we take the beta stamp off of it, that that's there. This will, um, uh, after a, a suitable beta period, this will replace the other Indicio public mediator that we have and we'll retire that. Um, 
This one is specifically designed uh, to, to scale quite large. Um, it does have WebSocket support, um, which means you can open up a WebSocket um, and, and turn on live delivery mode uh, when you're connected and, and messages will live deliver to your application uh, over uh, as they arrive. Um, and so um, there's some, um, uh, there's some, some stuff in there. Colton, is this correct? Are these two protocols the ones that we, we supported? Did that not get updated? I'm not Colton, but this is not correct. Uh, this page needs some updates. Okay, we'll fix this. Um, there, there's new versions of the protocols that are that are supported here. We just took a copy of the page and fixed the invitation. So um, we'll go ahead and, and, and uh, correct the the appropriate versions of the protocols necessary to use the mediator. Um, but that's there. Any questions about this? It's, go ahead and use this. We'll just correct the, the documentation here about which protocols are involved. Um, and please reach out with questions. Any questions about this public mediator? This is open for use. We do not recommend building a production product on it. Um, but what, the, the reason we initially put up a public mediator and the mission continues is that we didn't want, we wanted to reduce the burden of, of the number of things that folks had to run in order to you know, like test an agent uh, and mediators are useful, of course, not only for mobile devices, um, but also devices that exist behind firewalls um, or, or other other things that uh, that make it a little bit more difficult to use. And so this is available for, you know, development and testing of all of those things or, or, or demos. Um, we do recommend a different solution for a production service. Um, we always recommend that you have a you use a mediator that has a fiducial responsibility to you um, uh, when you're when you're running into production with things. Um, but uh, but this is open for all of those early tests so that uh, so that those can be as streamlined and, and as easy as possible. Any any questions about the public mediator? I think we have just barely enough time, maybe, to do a quick didcom demo. Okay, no questions. Uh, Colton, can I pass a screen share to you for the demo? I'm not so sure how the screen share will work on my on the laptop that I'm using right now. Um, okay, hang on a sec. Let me see. Uh, let's see a demo. We want to see a demo. It's really cool, actually. Um, let me. Okay, I haven't had time to pull the new version yet, but so I apologize. Uh, the link Cole. that I put, posted in there is the GitHub Pages one. The only problem with it right now is that um, the WebSocket is not live per se because it's not uh, SSL encrypted. I don't know what that means practically for the demo. Uh, the web browser does not like doing HTTPS to unencrypted web sockets. Oh, because it's coming from a from a secure page. Yep. Okay, we we'll, we can fix that. But in the meantime, here's what we've built, and all the credit here goes to to Daniel and and Colton and Micah who who built this. Um, when you load this page, it automatically generates a peer did. And notice we're using a peer did mostly for the sake of the expediency in creating the demo. This was the demo that I used last Friday um, with the Onyx Hackathon. Um, it also just gives you a name, of course, which you can uh, just click the edit button to change. Um, but um, uh, the idea here is that you can copy this did. And if someone else actually loads this up, does this work, Colton, or does it not work off the GitHub pages? Oh yeah, it should work. It, you just have to click the refresh button to get a new message in the top right there. Copy that. Okay. So if you add, add, add a, uh, or actually, if, if you send me my contact, I'll send you a message or you did. So here's, uh, here's the one that I have. Um, and what I did is I copied this and I just pasted it in the, in the Zoom chat. You folks can see this. You can also load this up yourself. Um, what it's doing is it creates a, is it is it loads up, um, creates an internal do, did for use uh, contacting the mediator. Uh, it sets up mediation and then generates a did and coordinates that using mediator coordination protocols. And all of these messages, the unencrypted forms, can actually be found within the log here. Um, and then uh, what it allows uh, is for um, is for the uh, the messages to um, uh, to be sent back and forth between any two tabs doing this, whether it's on your own computer or whether it's on different computers as well. Um, so I'm hitting refresh, Colton, and I haven't seen a message from you yet. I'm going to add your contact. Um, we have a we have a uh, reverse. 
Did I do it the wrong way? Yep. Nice. And now I broke the universe. Uh, hit refresh a couple times. Well, I just oh. refreshed everything. Then the did change there. Yeah, the did change. Okay, let's see. Let's see how fast we can do this. I, I just sent you my new did. So copy the did. Go to my page. New contact. Paste the did. We have the audible version of screen share by Colton. Thank you for that. So Colton's going to, uh, on his system, is going to uh, do the same thing, and then will send me a message. This is a um, the, this repository right now now is hosted with Indicio, but the uh, the Didcom users group has expressed interest in it living uh, within the diff, and so this repo will be transferred to them as it's a primarily a, just a Didcom um, oriented demo. So a contact showed it, up it here. Just a couple more times there, because there's an exchange that happens to get that to be shorter. Okay, it isn't happening yet. Uh, well, hit it a couple more times. Huh, weird. Okay, but if I click in here, there's a there's a message, and, and the did is uh, you know demos as they are in in progress, but um, uh, and so it allows for the the sending of messages back and forth, uh, you know, between those two parties. Um, this is normally um, so. Here's the response from Colton. Um, and this is uh, this is normally happens over live web sockets, and we'll fix the web socket issue so that it's it's not upset about that. Um, but the uh, but then messages can arrive back and forth. And the cool part, and I'm going to have to I apologize for the stretchy of the window, um, but the, the entire log of what actually happens, you know, of course, appears in this in this log on the side. This is useful as a as a demonstration of of Didcom, what the messages are like, how it works, and how useful this can be, but also provides a way that this works anywhere, regardless of firewalls or or any other considerations. Um, and so it's a it's a pretty simple way to make that happen. Um, and so we'll we'll smooth out the demo um, and, uh, and 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 everything else. We 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 hurried and added some stuff, which which makes it which makes it really nicer. But you know, of course, we're in the middle of doing that in in, in demos as they are. Um, but uh, we'll have another link, and, and this is something that will be public and posted. Um, right now, it is using the uh, the uh, a mediator that Indicio runs. Um, it's, it's using a public mediator um, that uh, we can fix the demo later so that it can be reassigned to use a different mediator or, or pick one of the community ones at random. Um, but uh, but this is uh, that that's running it up, and so and, and pretty cool. The, the the point here too is to sort of help people understand. Uh, you know how simple and easy didcom can be, um, but also uh, if, uh, there's some couple of, of boxes here that you know don't really do anything yet. The idea is is to allow you to craft a message and then transmit it to the other party um, without necessarily having you know built-in protocol support. Um, and so uh, so so very cool. We we did we demoed this uh, both on, on Friday and in the, in the Monday's uh, didcom user group call, and this will get a little bit cleaner as well. Um, but um, but wanted to, to kind of show it here because of how cool it is. And the credit here goes squarely to Daniel and Colton and Micah for the creation of this um, and the and the back end uh, you know mediation support that allows this to happen. Turns out I hadn't updated. So if you go back to the contacts list and refresh a couple times. Uh, click back to contacts. Oh, you have another one. So if I send you a message here, and you'll notice that the Colton Wilkins uh, came from Colton uh, via a protocol to exchange simple profile information that exists in the community uh, to make that happen. Yep, th using the user profile protocol. Right. And so we have a response here as well. So this is, uh, and so this starts from the the, the new inbound did, uh, but then uh, but then you know gets replaced using the, the 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 profile protocol. So anyway, that we're out of time, and that's the demo. It'll be a little smoother next time, but we're we're pretty darn close. Um, and and uh, we'll we'll get the the web sockets working with uh, with SSL, and uh, and we'll show everyone that uh, another time, and and it'll it'll be available at a public. Uh, this URL uh, it's also in the meeting notes. Um, you can grab and play with. Um, it's, there's also, uh, if, you, if you go to the obvious GitHub repository behind this, you'll be able to see the, the open source code that does this too. 
Um, this is all, and it runs entirely in the browser, except of course the use of the mediator, which happens in a normal Didcom manner. Um, and so it's a good example of this. This the, there's limitations on this demo where intentionally doesn't don't really have a, a wallet in the traditional sense. There's no uh, support for credential protocols. Um, this is not intended to be used as a as a wallet or something, but it, it makes for a really good tool and a fantastic demo to make this happen. Also, right now it only supports did peer two, um, but th that will, uh, will work. we have uh, ideas on how to expand that to other resolvable did methods as well to allow the the demo to be even that much cooler. And with that, thanks folks for coming. Thanks for letting us squeeze in a demo here right at the end and <laughs> being tolerant of our, of our demo as we make that work. Um, uh, excellent work uh, on producing the demo for those that did it. And uh, thanks for the conversation today. Um, we, will, uh, we will follow back up with Patrick's uh, discussion of protocol stuff uh, next week. Um, and we will see you all later and hope your week is a great one. Thanks everyone. Thank, Thank you. you. Have a good week.